Hello everyone. This is Paul Lucas inviting you to stay tuned for the next half hour for one of radio's outstanding dramatic productions. Proudly we hail. And now, another proudly we hail, one of radio's outstanding dramatic half hours, starring Paul Lucas, and presented transcribed coast to coast in cooperation with this station by your Army and your Air Force. From Radio City, New York, here is your star on Proudly We Hail, the distinguished Broadway stage, screen, and radio star, Paul Lucas. Thank you, Kenneth Bankhart. Our play is entitled Weekend at Kolenka's. The scene behind the Iron Curtain, the time today. Our story, a tale of a frightened man, treachery, and a saved life. Our first act curtain will rise after this important message. Here's a word to the young women of America. Have you heard about the excellent opportunities for advancement in the expanding Women's Army Corps? Every day, more young women are finding out the details about job openings in the Women's Army Corps. So visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. Volunteer for the WAC today. And now with your star, Paul Lucas, in the role of Stefan Donner, your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, Weekend at Kolenkovs. Stefan Donner, the noted composer and pianist, was an enigma in the minds of most people. Very few knew the true character of this seemingly cold and arrogant genius who played before the high and mighty everywhere. Music was his life. He had interest for little else in this stupid world. He'd said it often enough and proved it too. Proved it so conclusively that he was received on both sides of an iron curtain which had become a well-guarded dividing line between the beginning and the end of hope. Now, sometimes I wonder why I ever got into this stupid business. Getting a man up in the middle of the night, driving around black alleys. Richard seems to think that I can live two lives without having any sleep in either of them. Tonight I played a concert. There he is, sir, on the corner. Nothing behind us. All right, pull up. I'll open the door. If I may say so, you pick a rotten time to do business. Sorry, Stefan. You are sorry. Now, that's fine. That's excellent. Only you don't have to play a concert tomorrow. You don't have to go to Prague and put up with the enlightened idiocy of a bunch of mechanical robots. No. You, What's you he don't... got? Indigestion rink? I really couldn't say, sir. Uh, Stefan, you know Colonel Maxim Kalenkov? Yes, I know the Colonel. What about it? Kalenkov's now in Prague and will be for about a week. He's going to be on hand to hear you play. Mm, his taste in music couldn't be better. He'll be using the home of a fellow colonel away on leave. With Kalinkov there, there'll be a Dr. Hans Heinrich, one of their top scientists. He's what the fuss is all about. He's a German whom they grabbed at the end of the war. Now, for the past six years, he's been working for them, and from all indications, completely converted to their ways. Only we have reason to think he may not be, uh, well, that he's been desperately seeking a way to escape. What makes you think that? I'll give the details later. Right now, I want to give you the overall picture. Now, Heineck is tough. You'd be treading on very thin ice. Mm, it wouldn't be a trap because they would gain so little by it. No, but if Heineck isn't trying to get away and you tipped your hand, he'd expose you and you'd be a cold turkey. Richards? I may be many things, dead or alive, but please don't confuse me with a cold turkey. <laughs> All right, Your Highness, but you can see the situation. Well, the weak point is that we don't know whether Heinrich really wants to get out. And the problem is, if he does want to get out, how do we arrange it? I think we have that pretty well planned out. Oh, you do? Well, now, isn't that charming? Suppose you tell me about it. Well, it's a matter of timing more than anything else. Well, I disagree. More than anything else, it's a matter of Stefan Donner sticking his neck in a noose. Uh, uh, our necks, sir. Oh, yes, of course. I beg your pardon, Ring. 
our necks. Ah, tell them to go away. Tell them they've heard me play and that's enough. Yes, sir. I'm very sorry, but the master's tired. Is he too tired to say hello to his old friend Kolenkov, eh? Kolenkov, ring, let him in. Ha <laughs> ha, Kolenkov, what a surprise. Yeah. Were you out there tonight? Yeah. Good, good. I see that you haven't lost all your brains. Ha ha ha, Donna. <laughs> you don't change. No, you don't change at all. Change? Why should I change? You and your friends are doing enough of that. <laughs> I think you have the most horrible disposition of any man I know. <laughs> now listen, how long are you here? Where are you staying? I have a concert in Paris next Friday, Ooh, but I... that means you can spend the weekend with me. I'm staying out in the country. Have a house all to myself. <laughs> There'll be just the four of us. Four? Who are the others? My... Uh... My wife, Martha, and... Uh... Your wife? Ha, <laughs> ha, you! You married! Ha, 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 What is so strange about that? You mean you are depriving all the women in this part of the world? <laughs> well, I wouldn't say that, but wait until you see Martha. <laughs> <laughs> I can hardly wait. Who is the fourth? A man named Heinrich. He's a doctor. Why, what's the matter? You're sick? <laughs> no, 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 not that kind. He's a scientist. A scientist? Mm -hmm. Scientist. No, I'm sorry, I won't come. But why? What's wrong with that? I don't like scientists. Oh, come, Donna. Don't be childish. <laughs> Dr. Heinrich is a very pleasant fellow. What yes. are you doing with a scientist, anyway? <laughs> Let us not talk shop. We're here on business. Well, what about? Will you come? <laughs> I insist. I'll have my chauffeur pick you up in the morning. Uh, where are you staying? Well, that won't be necessary. I just bought a new car. Ring here will drive me out. Do you have accommodations for him? Of course. <laughs> new car, eh? <laughs> you must be rich. What kind? Well, I think we'll call it a donor. I had it specially built. <whistles> specially built? <laughs> well, I'll give your man the directions. Now, it's good to see you. You're a breath of fresh air in a... Tomb, in... Kolenko. A tomb. about a car. Uh, what a beauty. Mm -hmm. Come look it over. I'll take you for a ride later. Excellent. <laughs> well, how do you like this place? Hmm? It looks horrible. <laughs> I might have known you. you'd say something like that. <laughs> oh, Martha. Martha, this is Stefan Dono, the great musician. He's also the worst mannered fellow I know. <laughs> Pleasure, madam. I'm happy to see that the colonel not only has good musical taste. Why, thank you so much. We are very happy that you could come. I am happy to see that the co <laughs> Did you hear that, Martha? He paid us a compliment. Incredible. <laughs> I think the inside is as bad as the outside? Worse. It looks like a stuffed museum. Hmm. Your wife is the only reason I'm staying. <laughs> I can't figure out how anyone so charming and lovely could marry an oaf like you. You go too far, Donna. <laughs> you mean it doesn't bother you? You don't ever think about it? Well, that's even worse. I didn't say that. My wife and I... I, I, I beg your pardon, Colonel. Oh, but, but there I, you are, Heinrich. Come in and greet my friend, Stefan Donner. Stefan Donner? Oh, oh, I didn't see you. Excuse me, I, how do you do? How do you do, sir? Oh, here, have a drink, man. And stop looking like a scared rabbit. I'm not going to bite you, and I won't let Donner try. <laughs> Oh, wine, Herr Donner. <laughs> it's a pity the doctor and I have to leave you for a while, but we have some business in the city. Planning to blow it up? 
<laughs> Don looks so startled, Heinrich. <laughs> Don is always saying things like that. He has courage. Oh, he's a fool. Or both. <laughs> Isn't that right, Don? Well, I live in an age of fools. I have to associate with them all the time. So perhaps that makes me one, too. What about you, Doctor? Are you a fool? Oh, no, he isn't a fool. He's a very smart man. Why don't you let him answer for himself? Well, Doctor? I'm, I'm worse than a fool. I'm a coward. Oh, come now. Let's stop this. How long will you be gone, Maxim? Mm, several hours, probably. <laughs> you won't be lonely, will you? I shouldn't think so. I may even be able to talk Herr Donner into playing for me. What is it called? Oh, I don't know. Nocturne is as good a name as any. Do you like it? It's lovely. Tell me, how does a man like you tolerate a man like my husband? <laughs> I have to tolerate much worse than your husband. He's loud and brash and quite stupid, but he's not really such a bad sort. You don't know him as I do. No, I don't. If you feel that way, how is it you married him? I had no choice. Please, please don't take me mad, Herr Donner, but, but I'd like to ask you an important question. Whatever you ask, madam, I promise I won't think you mad. This is as close to Western Europe as I have been since the end of the war. I, I don't know if I'll ever get another chance like this. I want to get out. I want to get across to the other side. Can you tell me what I should do? As bad as that? Hmm? As bad as that. You know, I uh, keep out of these things. I don't take sides. Your husband is as much a friend as some French or English or American colonel. I read them all the same. I know that. I'm not asking you to risk anything. Just, just tell me what you'd do if you wanted to get out. I don't know as I know. I've never been in the position. I've heard it said it's very difficult to cross the border. It's very well guarded. Still, it's done all the time. Tell me, why do you say these things to me? Aren't you afraid I might tell your husband? No, I'm not. So you suppose if I, I got on a plane for, say, Switzerland, I might get there? With the right papers, I suppose it's possible. Mm. But really, madam, I am the last man in the world to ask for advice on something like this. I'm a musician, nothing else. And when it comes to this sort of thing, I, I can play it baby in the woods. Uh, what's the matter, Ring? Someone's been through the luggage, sir. Well, that's normal. Anything's missing? I'm afraid so, sir. The papers, all of them. You mean... Yes, sir. Everything. Hmm. <laughs> it looks to me, Ring, like the good Dr. Heinrich is indeed a very desperate man. You'll have to try and prevent him from doing anything rash. Starring in the role of Stefan Donner in the proudly we hail production Weekend at Kolenkoff's will return in just a moment for the second act. Any woman who knows the great things women have done in our nation's history knows that the work of the Women's Army Corps deserves a high place on the list. The women of the WAC, Women's Army Corps, are again serving alongside the men of the United States Army. If you are a young woman between 18 and 34 and qualify, you can find a career of deeply satisfying service in the Women's Army Corps. Because your United States Army and the Women's Army Corps are growing rapidly today, your chances for advancement are better than ever. Visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. Learn all the facts today. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now with your star, Paul Lucas, in the role of Stefan Donner, we present the second act of Weekend at Kolenkovs. For 
a scientist, you don't play a bad game of billiards. What kind of a scientist are you, anyway? I... I can't talk about it. Can't talk about it? <laughs> Do you think that anyone could keep me from talking about my music? It's somewhat different. Your music won't... won't destroy anything. You know, if I felt the way you did, I'd, I'd quit. Go someplace else. <laughs> you choke. Quit. Go someplace else. Impossible. Even if I ever let a thought enter my head. Well, I suppose it would be rather difficult for a chap like you. They keep pretty close tabs on you, huh? Are you really so blind, sir? Don't you know what's going on in the world today? <laughs> you know, I can tell you all about yourself. First, the Nazis. You worked for them because you had a family. And you like living pretty well yourself. Next, you are confiscated by our friends here. Maybe you still have a family. Maybe you still like living. And maybe they have just frightened you to the point where you are helpless. But now you are closer to the other side than you have been since the war. And you want to get out. Oh, how you want to get out. Stop. You have no, no, no right to, to talk that way. I, I'm perfectly happy with my work. I... And anybody who would be stupid enough to try it with another man's papers doesn't deserve What's to have this? it. What is this? Oh, good morning. I must say you are a fine host. Forgive me, Steph. What is all this talk I just heard about papers? The, I, well, the good is... doctor and I were discussing how foolish it would be for one man to try to cross the border with another man's papers. Oh, who is trying that? Why ask me? Heinrich, <laughs> don't tell me you. <laughs> you? Please. Oh, I, I said nothing, Colonel. He made it all up. Every third of it. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. And if my papers and the papers of my men are back there where they belong in half an hour, I'll forget Your those. papers? You mean someone... Heinrich, you and I had better have a little talk. Perhaps together we can find Herr Donald's papers. It embarrasses me to have an honored guest treated in such a manner. Come along. When your papers have been returned, Stefan, I'd like to take a ride in your new car. Did you have to do that? Oh, madam, you, you, you startled me. Uh, did I have to do what? I heard the whole thing. I was in the conservatory. Your voices carried. In this part of the world today, what is more important than a man's papers? Last night, I thought you were the kind of person who knew the answer to that. Now I see that you're not. Couldn't you have gotten them back without telling my husband? That poor, tortured little man. I have no sympathy for men like him. I'm sorry. You don't even know he was the one who stole them. It was rather obvious. How are your plans coming? That no longer concerns you, Herr Donner. You are perfectly right, madam. But still, I wish you good luck. While I am out driving with the colonel, get to Heinrich. You'll have to put it across to him. If I go near him now, it would be completely out of character. Well, I think it's working out very nicely, sir. So far, but the big hurdle lies ahead. The radiogram will arrive tomorrow afternoon so we can cross the border at night. Uh, how long will you be gone, sir? No, no longer than an hour. He's got to be ready then. I'll park the car in the drive. You'll be ready to take it back by the stables. You know what to do then? Quite, sir. I'll busy myself wiping it off and that sort of thing. I'm sure no one's about. I'll unlock the trunk and open the compartment behind it. Then I'll go off for a few minutes, and while I'm gone, the doctor's to come out of the stables and get into the compartment. I'll come back, close it and the trunk, and await developments. Mm, and you can rest assured, the hue and cry will be heard from here to Moscow. First, he's got to be talked into it, sir. What do you want? I, uh, wonder if I might have a word with you, sir. You're his servant, aren't you? That's right. Just wanted to say I, I don't blame you for what you did. 
Could I come in for a moment? What is it? Now, uh, this friend of mine had a specially built car. Behind the trunk, there was a compartment. A small man, a man like yourself, could get into it. Of course, it was very small and stuffy. And after a few hours in such a place, a man might be willing to give the whole thing up. Unless he was really desperate. Oh, they worked it very neatly. It was at a place uh, similar to this. A Sunday afternoon. Stables in the rear, no one around. The chap hid in the stables while the other man worked about the car. Then when the time was right... Of course, the chap had to realize he'd be boxed up in the compartment a number of hours before the trip would start toward the border. And the trip itself would be long and grueling. That's what the chap had to understand. And do you know, sir, it worked. And no one was ever the wiser. <laughs> Absolutely priceless. <laughs> what is it, Martha? I thought you should know. Dr. Heinisch seems to be nowhere about. He's disappeared. What? His what? If he took my papers again, I'll wring his crony neck. I never thought he'd have the nerve. Never. Oh, calm down, Kolenkov. He can't get very far. I know, I know. But the police have been on this since two o'clock. Here at his six. No choice. Not a choice anyway. Maybe he threw himself in the river. That is exactly what I'm afraid he may have done. That's even worse for me. I was trusted to take good care of him. He's one of our most important scientists. He's the man who... If I don't get him back, I'll... Hello! What? Oh, yes, yes, he's right here. For you. Oh, hello. Yes, that's right. All right, read it. What? Wednesday night? Wednesday night. Why, of all the stupid, idiotic... Yes, yes, I got it. No, there is no reply. Now, that's the last straw. Trouble for you? No, no, nothing like that. Just that they have my concert book for Wednesday night and not Friday. Oh, why have I got to put up with such fiddle-headed nincompoops? I'll have to leave at once. Oh, uh, rink, rink. I think it was you who had trouble. I wonder what you would do if you were in my spot. Well, I'd probably shoot myself. Madam, I regret I have to depart in such a hurry. I've already said goodbye to your husband, who seems to be somewhat busy on the telephone. I'm sorry we were not able to become better acquainted. Frankly, Herr Donner, I don't think either of us would benefit. You have your music, and I... I have my plans. And no better time than now to try them out. Goodbye, madam. Don't let him go. Something to trouble, Colonel? Oh, if, would you mind if I, if I came along as far as the border? I, I think it would be wise for me to be a chair, just in case Heinrich tries to get through there. <laughs> yes, that's a very good idea under the circumstances. Climb in. Oh, uh, Martha, I, uh, I may not be back for a while. Take good care of yourself. I'll do that, Maxim. Don't you worry. think that I, Maxim Kalenkov, could come to this. It's tragic. When tragic. I get my hands on that sniveling little atom breaker, I'll, I I'll... told you scientists were a despicable lot. I am Colonel Kalenkov. Here are my papers. Pass this car too. My orders, sir, are to search every car and to carefully examine all papers. <laughs> you stupid fool! Who do you think issued those orders? I did! 
Let this car pass at once. Yes, sir. Well, Colonel, I hate to leave you in such a bad hole. I'm sure Heinrich will turn up. If he doesn't, well, stay close to the border. I assure you, I plan to. My health is very important to me. Goodbye, Donna. I hope to see you again. Auf Wiedersehen, Colonel. <laughs> he even helped us get away. Well, I thought he was going to ask us to take him across, too, oh, sir. Oh, oh, oh. If he had, I don't think I could have kept a straight face. Now, let's see if our unseen passenger is still alive. Pull up drink, and we'll get him out of there. He'll need air. Fresh air. star, Paul Lucas, will return with a word about next week's show in just a moment. Here's an urgent message to all registered nurses. This is a chance for you to be of vital service to your country and to yourself. The Army Nurse Corps has opportunities for you. You'll become a commissioned officer with good pay and allowances, with excellent chances to further your career. You'll have the benefit of working with the finest medical equipment in the world. You'll learn the newest professional techniques in anesthesia, operating room procedure, nursing administration, and many, many others. So get all the facts today. You can do this by writing or wiring the Surgeon General, United States Army, Washington 25, D.C. Do it now. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station by the United States Army and the United States Air Force Recruiting Service. Proudly We Hail stars Paul Lucas. Weekend at Colin Cups was written by DeWitt Cup. The music was composed and conducted by John Guarnieri. This program was produced under the supervision of Charles and Rogers Productions and was directed by Charles Wilkes. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking, and here again is your host and star, Paul Lucas. We cordially invite you to join us next week over the same station for Proudly We Hail. Our play is entitled The Key and the Cloak. Until then, goodbye.